judgment in the matter of R and S filling trading as Phoenix Engineering versus UK Insurance Limited. Again, it's Lord Hodge who will kindly explain our decision. Mr. Holden is a mechanical fitter employed by Phoenix Engineering in their garage. His car failed its MOT because of corrosion on its underside. He obtained his employer's permission to repair his car in their garage. This involved welding plates onto the underside of the car in an attempt to qualify it for the MOT. Having turned the car on its side, he grinded the steel on the underside and was welding a plate onto it when he noticed that the interior of the car had caught fire. The fire spread to the employer's garage and, and adjoining premises and caused over £2 million worth of damage. Phoenix's property and public liability insurers paid out the claims and then sought to recover their outlay from Mr Holden's motor insurers, alleging that Mr Holden had been negligent in the way he carried out his repairs. They agree not to claim from Mr Holden directly. Accordingly, the question for this court is whether Mr Holden's motor insurance policy covered the accident which occurred while he was repairing his car in his employer's garage. The question is one of the meaning of the wording of the policy which the insurance company, trading under the name of Churchill, issued at that time. The terms of the policy were altered later, but that has no bearing on this appeal. Since about 1930, it has been the law in the United Kingdom that a driver of a vehicle must have insurance against third-party risk that is, to meet a liability in damages for injury to another person or damage to his or her property. The current act is the Road Traffic Act 1988, which requires drivers to have such, such cover for liability for such injury and property damage, and I quote, caused by or arising out of the use of the vehicle on the road or other public place in Great Britain. It, it was not disputed that the wording of Churchill's policy was not apt to meet the, the requirement of uh, the Road Traffic Act. Uh, the, the policy was addressed to the driver in admirably simple English and stated that Churchill would, quote, cover you for your legal responsibility if you have an accident in your vehicle and you kill or injure someone, you damage their property or you damage their vehicle, end quote. By speaking of accidents occurring when the driver was in the car, the policy read literally did not cover the many circumstances which the Road Traffic Act requires to be covered. It was also clear that the insurers intended their policy to give, cover, uh, to give the cover that the Act required, as the policy certificate contained a statement from the insurer's chief executive certifying that the policy required the, uh, the policy satisfied the requirements of United Kingdom law. The question, therefore, is to identify the appropriate corrective construction to be placed on the words of the policy to give effect to the intention uh, that it covered uh, the, uh, it provided the cover required by the statute. There was a complication that the UK statute does not match the current requirements of EU law, but as I shall explain, that is not relevant to the outcome of this appeal. Judge Waxman QC, sitting as a High Court judge, rejected the claim by Phoenix's insurers, concluding that the accident had not been caused by or arisen out of the use of the car, uh, but as a result of its negligent repair. The Court of Appeal took a different view and concluded that the correct interpretation of the policy, which did not have any geographical limitation as to its cover, was that the insurers would cover the driver, quote, if there is an accident involving your vehicle, unquote. Churchill appeals that judgment to this court. In a unanimous judgment, this court allows Churchill's appeal. In so doing, the court does not accept the new argument which Churchill advances, namely that the chief executive's statement in the policy certificate was itself a provision giving cover under that policy. Rather, the reason why the court grants the appeal is that it is being asked to construe a contract to correct a linguistic mistake, and it is appropriate to go no further than is necessary to correct that mistake. As the House of Lords stated in Chartbrook Limited 
uh, and Persimmon Homes Limited, the court must be clear what a reasonable person would have understood the parties to have meant. The policy gave covers for accidents when the driver was in the car and was intended to cover other circumstances in which the driver had to have compulsory insurance, which related to accidents caused by or arising out of the use of the vehicle on, a, on the road or in a public pay, place. In a recent judgment called Smith and Mead, the Court of Justice of the European Union has confirmed that a failure of a member state to legislate consistently with EU law on motor insurance uh, does not require a private in insurance policy which was based on national legislation to be read down in order to make it compatible with EU law. Accordingly, what the English courts had to do uh, was to reflect the requirements of the UK statute uh, in their interpretation of the policy cover. This involved reading the relevant clause in the policy as if it said, and I quote, we will cover you for your legal responsibility if you have an accident in your vehicle or if there is an accident caused by or arising out of your use of your vehicle on the road or other public place. Another clause of the policy extended that cover to insured persons who were driving with the permission of the insured. So the cover required by the Road Traffic Act was thus available. In agreement with Judge Waxman, this court holds that the damage to which Mr. Holden's repairs gave rise was not caused by and did not arise out of the use of the car on the road or in a public place. Rather, the damage arose out of, rose out of the allegedly negligent repair which Mr. Holden carried out in his employer's garage. Churchill's policy, as then worded, did not cover damage caused in this way. Thank you. The court is now adjourned. <laughs>